So here at the Mobile World Congress, uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Diaz Subra. I am a product manager for Cortex-M with ARM based in Cambridge. And I'm in charge of things like wearable and IoT endpoints. So Cortex-M, how big is Cortex-M? Well, it depends on how you want to define big. So basically Cortex-M may at some point can be at 4 microwatts per megahertz, which means you can do things like this. They can go four months on a battery. I don't know if wearing it. Four months, right, right there. On a battery. So this is an activity tracker that you can put in your pocket or wear on your wrist. And you can swim with it. And of course, then you pick up the results on your phone as you're seeing everywhere in the market for activity trackers. Bluetooth 4, right? Yes. Bluetooth, Bluetooth Smart. 4. Bluetooth Smart is ARM. There's well, no way to do it without, is there? Uh, Bluetooth Smart is a standard and normally to run the stack you need a low power CPU. So you can come to ARM with Cortex-M. It's the best. Okay, it's, well, it's what we like to say, but basically if you want the lowest power then you come to Cortex-M. And with still be able to run 32-bit full stacks, uh, communication stacks basically, that's why. So when was Cortex-M launched? Uh, probably before 2006 and, and it, it, we've just been progressing since then with new devices every few years. What is the progress? What does it involve in progressing? When you say progressing, is it making yeah. lower power consumption, and more features? What is it? Yes, we actually we went in two directions. One is to go lower power and even lower area. And the second one is adding more performance, for example, in doing uh, DSP algorithms. So one of the things you see everywhere is sensor fusion, which is we take multiple sensors and you put some software to mix the input from these sensors. So in that case, you want to do some DSP algorithms, but you still want to be very low power. So we have the Cortex-M4, which was made exactly for those situations. Uh, Cortex-M4, when was that launched? Oh, if I remember correctly, probably 2010, maybe? Something 2010? like that. I don't remember the date yet. And uh, so sensor fusion is, for example, the power consumption can be tiny until you just touch it and then suddenly it activates. Sensor fusion is a very interesting challenge for everybody because basically you have multiple sensors and the sensors are always on. That's the whole idea. Always on? All of them? All of or them. some of them? Right, so you may have a magnetometer, an accelerometer and a bunch of other sensors and basically they are always on and you need some sort of software to determine has there been any change or is it the same as before. So what you're looking for is you're looking for a change of context. Like now I'm standing, okay, so the sensors will just re keep saying I'm standing, I'm standing, I'm standing, so there's nothing to be done. If I start walking, all of a sudden you'll get the indication to say, okay, he started walking, is there something we need to do? So if you're linked, for example, to something related to a position and where are you, at that point, you want to take action because the user just moved, right? And so all the smartphones on the market today, they have a sensor fusion device, which is always on, whereas your main processor goes to sleep. And when you have a change in context, the sensor fusion device will wake up the smartphone to say, okay, we have a change in context. One of the most interesting phones of 2013 is Moto X. It has this crazy things going on there. Okay. It just, uh, you touch it, it's on, you don't need a power button. You, yeah. you talk to it yep. anytime, yep. like it's always listening. Does yep. that have anything to do with ARM? This, well, I don't know what's inside of it for ARM, but basically this is sensor fusion because people think about just accelerometers for motion. But right now you're having everything in terms of environmental, including sound or voice. So for example, all these voice activated things, they are all sensors and then they are detecting the sound until they detect a certain keyword and then they wake up and they start trying to see, okay, did you say the magic word or not? So in the case of a phone that's just sitting somewhere and you just speak to it, the sensor fusion chip is always on, it's listening, and when you start speaking, it will wake up the phone to say, okay, the user is here, now you have to do something. So sensor fusion, sounds so, it sounds so awesome. But, <laughs> so how is an arm? Like, uh, sensors are not like analog things, and yep. you connect them through a digital thing that's arm part, or what is it? Okay, the sensors, the part where arm comes in is, you have to do some software, because you're looking at all these sensors to see what has to be done, and that software is very complex and sophisticated. 
So you have to actually have a real processor that can run that software. At the same time, it has to be a very, very low power processor because it is always on. And this is exactly where ARM comes in because you have the 20 years of low power, complicated or you know, rich processing technology that is in the Cortex-M uh, product line. And for all these sensors, yes, they, they are analog, and you put this processor next to it, and normally you put a Bluetooth uh, chip next to them, and that's basically the, the, the fundamental design for all these sensor fusions. And the sophistication comes in as you add more and more sensors. So if you just add an accelerometer, you can now count steps. If you start adding things like uh, microphones, you can detect, am I inside or am I outside? Um, and you add magnetometers, you can get more precision on the movement in which direction and so on and so on. So the more you add, the more context information you can get from the user, but at the same time, the more um, the software complexity that you have to handle, because this is all real time, this is complex. Uh, people think an accelerometer is easy, actually it's not, you have to really know what you're doing. And you have sophisticated algorithms to ha handle these things. And right now you have a, an industry that has come out for companies that do what they call sensor fusion algorithms. That's what they sell, software to handle fusion of multiple data sources. It's a new industry. Yeah, I mean, two years ago the concept of sensor fusion was not as known as today. You have a factor maybe of 100. And you have companies that have grown really quick because you need this technology. And of course, once you put it in a smartphone, you get the volume that goes with it. So probably I can safely say all the smartphones have some sort of a sensor fusion chip. But some of them might have them and not really use them right. Exactly. Yet. Exactly. It's a matter of software. So you can Just put software is missing for now. Yeah. It could be a new version of Android or something. That I cannot tell. But normally, even with one sensor, you put in new software and you can get different context information. It's just how you use the sensor. You can just you know, take basic stuff or you can go into complex algorithms or you can go into fusion and you can keep adding functionality. So it sounds awesome. It sounds complex. And you're trying to make sense of it. Is that your, what you do? You're trying um, to organize it? I am trying to make sure that as they want to do these really nice sophisticated applications that we are ready with the processing power required to make it happen. So the next Mobile World Congress might be crazy. Well, this one is pretty good. It's already, already pretty crazy now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I guess you have some things you, are, you know is going to happen which are awesome which we haven't really seen yet. Well, the focus for everybody now is on wearable. And in terms of crazy stuff, you've, you've seen it probably already, you know, like sensors in your shoes that will tell you it's time to replace the shoes. Or the same sensor in your shoes that tell you you're actually not walking uh, straight, that you have a, you know, like one, um, you know, more pressure on one leg than the other leg. And that actually will impact your health. Right, and then you have all the medical and health stuff. So now they are talking about activity trackers like this one. The next step is to do a prediction. So as you can track somebody over a few months, at some point you'll be able to predict that they are about to have a heart attack or something like that. This is now very much talked about in the news, but the technology is already here. It's just a matter of you know packaging and then going out to the public with such a thing. So all these things are going to happen because once you have a bunch of sensors on your body, there's all kinds of things that are um, possible. So it's a matter of packaging, actually. Is it a gold rush or something, or are people like uh, too lazy to make it happen? How soon can it happen, all this? Uh, it can happen as soon as they figure out what people call the business model, right? So if I'm going to build this product, uh, maybe it's fun, maybe it's something cool to do, but at some point you want to do some business. So once they figure out how to do some business with this, it will happen. The technology is all here, the sensors are here, the software, people know how to do this. There's few companies that are doing really good work with this. The processor is here, the low power is here, so they just have to figure out the business. And it's going to be huge, there's billions and billions and billions of chips. Okay, th this is my way of saying this. Every person has a smartphone or a mobile phone. And now imagine that that person will also have one, two or three sensors. So that gives you an idea of the volume. 
Bye.